Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. Today's video is part of a Halloween movie night collab hosted by Jackie at Hearth and Apron Jackie Day. I'll have her channel linked in the description box below. As soon as you're done watching my video, be sure to check out Jackie's channel and the collab playlist for lots of other yummy recipes and ideas for your family Halloween movie night. If you're coming to my channel from the playlist, welcome. I do weekly what's for dinner videos and grocery hauls, plus recipes and more. I hope you take a look around my channel and that you'll consider subscribing. If you're a returning viewer or subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate it. When I found out about this collab, I knew immediately that I had to do it on Hocus Pocus. I love the movie Hocus Pocus. It's my favorite Halloween movie. So we invited our family over and had a family movie night. I made some Hocus Pocus themed snacks that everyone loved. Now, don't give me credit for this. I got all of these ideas from Pinterest. I cannot take credit. They would be great for your own family movie night or for a Halloween party. So let me show you what I did. First up, I'm making dead man's toes. If you've seen Hocus Pocus, you know that a dead man's toe was an ingredient in their brew of immortality. These are basically just barbecue smokies, which I know most of you probably already know how to make. In this crock pot, I'm going to add a package of little smokies. I'm going to add some barbecue sauce, grape jelly. And if you've never had this before, which I know most of you probably have, you might think it's a little weird with the grape jelly and the barbecue sauce, but trust me, it's really good. You, you really can't even tell that the grape jelly is in there. It just gives a good sweetness. I'm going to give that a stir and then cook this on low for two to three hours and that's it. Now, if you don't have little smokies or if you can't find them, you can also do this with sliced hot dogs or sliced smoked sausage. I serve these in a black tray. I believe I got this at Party City and I think it was a dollar, not more than two dollars. And I just want to make a quick note of this. So pretty much everything that you see, the decorations and things on the table and things like that, either I already had it on hand or I got it at the Dollar Tree or at Party City for super cheap. A couple of the things I got on Amazon, but you know, when you do Halloween parties or family movie nights or game nights or, you know, anything like that, don't pressure yourself to, to do things that are, you know, quote unquote, Pinterest worthy. You don't have to spend a lot of money. You can use things that you have on hand, hit up the Dollar Tree or, you know, sales, things like that. You can still make things look cute and have fun, but not spend a ton of money doing it. Next, I'm making spell book brownies. I had a brownie mix in my pantry that I needed to use up, so it was perfect, but I will say this. This mix that makes an eight by eight pan, it only made six brownies, so if you need more than that, you might wanna use like a family size pan. All I'm going to do is cook these brownies according to the package instructions, and I allowed it to cool at room temperature. I removed the brownies from my pan and placed it onto a cutting board. And then here you can see, I'm just showing you my phone. I did a search on Google for uh, like the Hocus Pocus spell book and looked on Pinterest, saw different pictures and I'm trying to recreate it. Now I have zero artistic ability and I'm not just saying that to be humble. I really have no artistic ability. So if I can do this, trust me, anyone can do this. And to be honest with you, I really contemplated doing this off camera uh, because I was so worried they were going to be horrific, but I just figured, you know what, what the heck, I'm just going to show it. And if the footage is awful, I can just delete it. So all I'm doing is taking the brownies, I'm cutting them into rectangles, just cut off the edges there and do not worry. These edges did not go to waste at all. I put those in a little Ziploc bag and actually you can see there, I, I sampled one of the edges right there, but I, I saved those and we snacked on those later. So next I'm going to take some of this black icing gel. You could probably use like chocolate frosting whatever you want and I don't know if you can see it or not no it's a little bit out of shot but here to the left I just have my phone up and I have one of those pictures up that I just showed you and I'm just trying to recreate it and like I said it wasn't perfect but even not being perfect they still turned out super cute and for the eyes for the book I just used some of these little candy eyeballs and I got these candy eyeballs and the icing at Walmart so here's the finished book and then I just laid these out on my platter and like I said even with my complete lack of artistic ability these still still turned out super cute. Next up, I'm making Billy Butcherson's Graveyard Taco Dip. Now, I did get this idea to do a taco dip this way from Pinterest, but the recipe for the taco dip itself is my Aunt Suzanne's recipe. I hadn't made it before this night, but it was actually good and it was easy, so I'll have that typed out in the description box below. I am having the recipe. So in the bottom of this casserole dish, I'm going to add in some of this Fritos bean dip. I'm going to spread that out into a layer. And then the next layer is a layer of guacamole. 
Quick note about this recipe. I think that I did veer off of Aunt Sue's recipe just a little bit. I think I did a couple of the layers in a different order than what she did um, just because I wanted like there to be a greenish red layer on top for the graveyard, but it really doesn't matter what order you add everything in. I would just suggest adding the guacamole towards the bottom so that it doesn't get brown. Now, I'm going to set that to the side and in this small bowl, I'm going to add in my sour cream, mayonnaise and taco seasoning. I'm going to stir that until it's well combined and then add that to the top of the guacamole and spread that out into a single layer. Next, I'm going to add a layer of pico de gallo. You could of course make your own. I'm just using store-bought to make it easy. If you don't like pico de gallo or if you like can't find it, don't have it, you could just use chopped up tomatoes. I'm going to then add a layer of shredded cheddar cheese. And then I'm going to add some salsa. I didn't have a lot of this salsa left, so I didn't do a full layer, but it was still just fine. It was delicious either way. And then you're going to add some chopped green onions. And I believe Aunt Sue's recipe calls for black olives, but not all of us like black olives, so I just left it off. And then that's it. I'm just going to cover this with some plastic wrap and place this into the refrigerator for a couple hours until we're ready to serve it. To make the dip look like a graveyard, I'm going to make some tortilla tombstones. To do that, I just took a flour tortilla. These are just what I have on hand. I took my kitchen shears and I just freehanded some tombstones. I did a couple that were rounded and one that was rectangular shape, and that was it. Super easy. Don't worry about being perfect. I mean, if you look at an old graveyard, the tombstones are not perfect, so don't pressure yourself at all. Just freehand it a little bit. And then I had this ghost cookie cutter already on hand, so I just cut that out. Uh, it was actually really easy. I wasn't sure if it would work or not, but it just went through the tortilla. And to cook these, I placed these on a cookie sheet, baked them at, I believe, 350 degrees for just about five to seven minutes or until they started to get nice and crispy and golden brown. To serve this, I just set out the taco dip and then I added the little tombstones and ghost into the dip and that was it. That was yummy little dip. To go along with that, I found these crispy potato chips. They are in ghost and bat shapes. I got these at Trader Joe's and I just served them in a little uh, spider web basket that I got at the Dollar Tree and that was an easy little dip to make and it was yummy and super cute. Next up, I made witch's brooms. My husband told me that out of everything that I made, that this was his favorite thing. And this was so easy and it was super cute. So let me show you how I did it. Here I have a package of string cheese that I got from Walmart. I'm going to cut each string cheese in half after I've removed the packaging, of course. And then with each half, um, about the bottom half, I'm going to take my paring knife and just make little cuts into the cheese going all the way around. Now, this was a little bit tedious and I did have to practice on one to get it right. Um, you know, I was just cutting a little too close and I was cutting the cheese out. But once you get the hang of it, it's really easy. Then I just flared the cheese out a little bit and then I'm going to take some pretzel sticks and I inserted a pretzel stick into the top and then that's it. Look, and this cute looks like a little broom. While I had those cheese sticks out, I decided to make some ghosts. I'm sure you've probably seen this before, but just in case you haven't, I wanted to share it. It's really, really easy and super quick. You just take a thing of string cheese, turn it over so that the label isn't showing, and then using a Sharpie, I just made a couple eyes and a little mouth, and that's it. So cute. This would be great to pop into your kiddo's lunch around Halloween or, you know, to have at a Halloween party, and that was it. Those are the little ghosts. Now, here are the broomsticks. I put it on a platter, and that was it. Easy, so cute. Next up are Lucky Rat Tails. These are just Twizzlers. You could also do this with uh, like Slim Jims I saw on Pinterest. I just put these into this little cauldron. I already had it as a little decoration. I just made sure to wash it really well with some soap and water and dried it. And then those were the Lucky Rat Tails. Next, I made Brew of Immortality Punch. This is the potion that the witches made. Here are the ingredients that you'll need. You'll need the Green Hawaiian Punch, Sprite, pineapple juice, green sherbet, and that's it. Now, I did half the recipe, and as you can see here from the picture, it made a full punch bowl. It was plenty for us, but if you're doing a big party, you might want to go ahead and use the full recipe. You just add the Sprite, the pineapple juice, and the sherbet, and the punch. Make sure that everything is nice and cold, though. You want to put this everything in the refrigerator like the night before. Add it to the punch bowl or whatever you're going to serve it in, and then allow it to sit for maybe about 15 minutes just so that the sherbet melts into the punch, and then that's it. Here it is, and this was actually pretty tasty. My little brother especially loved this punch. Next, we had some sandwiches. Get it? Sandwiches. 
<laughs> I can't take credit for that. I saw it on Pinterest, but my mom stopped by Kroger and she got some sub sandwiches from their deli. I cut them into servings and then I took some of the picks from a cupcake kit. So at the Dollar Tree, I got a little set that had cupcake liners and picks in them. I took some of the picks and just put them in the sandwich, one to help the sandwich hold together, but two, again, just to make it a little bit more festive. I served some mayonnaise and mustard on the side in case anyone wanted to add it to their sandwich, and these were actually tasty. To be honest, we didn't have high expectations from, you know, Kroger Deli pre-made sub sandwiches, but they were actually pretty good. And, you know, with parties or movie nights or really anything, do not feel bad at all taking help from the store. Even Ina Garten, like the, you know, hostess with the mostest, talks all the time about taking help from the store. If you have a dinner party or party or get together, do not feel like you have to make anything. Take help from the store. Just makes it easier on yourself. And there are things that you can do, like adding these little picks that don't add a lot of money or time that still kind of give it a little homemade twist. Finally, I made a spooky popcorn mix. I made this so that we could snack on it while we were watching our movie. In this bowl, which I love this, by the way, it reminds me of Binks. I think I got this last year at the Dollar Tree. I have this popcorn in my pantry. I want to use it up. So I took a couple of the packages and cooked them in the microwave according to the package instructions. I've added them to the bowl and I did allow it to cool for just a couple minutes. Then I'm going to add in some roasted peanuts. I had about a quarter of this jar, so I added that. Then I'm going to add some uh, pretzel twists. Next, I added some of this autumn mix. This is candy corn and candy pumpkins. To be honest, most of us in the family don't like candy corn. My dad's really the only one that likes it. He eats them with uh, peanuts, says that it tastes like a payday, but I added some really just to be festive. And then I added some Halloween M&Ms. I'm going to toss that until it is well combined. I had some of the candy eyes left over from the book brownie, so I decided to just toss those in, gave it another stir, and then I stored this in a Ziploc bag until I was ready to serve. Here's the finished snack mix. I served it in a little plastic cauldron that I got, I believe, at Party City. It was only $2 and something, maybe three at the most. But this snack mix was tasty. I loved the sweet and the salty together. It was really delicious. You can use whatever snacks you like in this. And um, you know what? Bugles. That would, I should have added bugles to that. We used to put them on our fingertips as kids for witches' fingers. So that would have been fun to add to this. But that was our snack mix. And here's everything set up. So I just added a tablecloth. I got this at the Dollar Tree. I have the book brownies, the dead man's toes, the witch's uh, brooms. We have the sandwiches. I got some of the napkins and plates. I believe I got the plates at Target. The napkins came from the Dollar Tree. That hocus pocus sign, I already had it. Uh, the punch bowl, I already had. That tree with the candles, I bought that years ago. I think it was at Yankee Candle Company. Then we have the um, graveyard taco dip the little ghost and bat chips, the lucky rat tails, the spooky snack mix, the other little hocus pocus sign I had, and the backdrop, I did buy that, and that's the one thing that I got on Amazon. Now, it was a little bit pricey. I think it was like 14 or $15, but it is a very thick plastic, and really, I didn't just get it for this um, movie night. I really got it like for trunk or treats, uh, for other Halloween parties and things like that. You don't just have to use it for Hocus Pocus. So, But again, you don't have to use that. I was just being a little bit extra, but this was really easy to put together. Again, it was budget friendly. I got most everything at the Dollar Tree or used stuff that I had on hand. It was super cute and it was a really fun night with the family just watching the movie. And it was a great way to bring like the fall on. <laughs> Here in Tennessee, it is not fall weather yet, but you know, with all of the treats and the spooky things and everything, it really started to feel that way. So thank you you so much for watching this was so so much fun uh you know planning for this video and making everything i really enjoyed it i hope you enjoyed it don't forget to check out jackie's channel as well as the collab playlist again they'll be linked in the description box below i hope you have a great rest of the day again thank you so much Bye bye